So we've been studying linear regression uh, so far, and it, it turns out linear regression is a quite uh, a powerful uh, idea. Fundamentally, it's, it's really inexpensive to evaluate the models. It's just a, a sum of a whole bunch of products. Uh, we can compute this solution to the parameter set uh, directly. This is the normal equation idea. That's assuming we have a small enough problem. And, and if that doesn't work, then we can also implement a, a gradient descent approach. And this turns out to be a very straightforward uh, implementation and computationally, it's rather uh, inexpensive. And the, and the book does actually take you through uh, some of the mathematics behind that gradient descent approach in Python. The other key property of uh, linear regression is that when, when we're using the mean squared error metric, there is only one minimum in the error space. So there are no local minima that we can get trapped in if, if we're doing gradient descent. There's only one good solution. And in, in, in reality, you can actually have a whole bunch of, uh, a whole family of solutions that are equivalent to one another. Uh, but you can't, but they're going to be connected together. Uh, they're, they're not going to be separated uh, into different wells in that error space. Linear regression though does have its drawbacks. And one of the first points is that the world really is never linear. Uh, and, and we'd like to be able to capture the, these nonlinear effects that are out in the world. One, one way we might want to capture these nonlinear effects is uh, to constrain the output to match our expectations of what valid values might be. So, so for example, if I am trying to generate an output that is uh, something that I'd like to interpret as a probability, it only makes sense if that fall, value falls between zero and one. And if, I, if the outputs fall outside of that range, we have no good way of interpreting those. So there are a whole variety of different ways that we can uh, tackle this, uh, this problem of linear models. And the, the one we're going to talk about right now is uh, this idea that we can uh, perform a nonlinear transformation on the inputs, but then keep the, the model itself uh, as, as, as a linear model. And, and that allows us to use all of the tools that we've already talked about so far. Another possibility is to have a linear model and then at the very end, we add a nonlinearity of some form and, and logistic regression is an example of, of doing this. Uh, another possibility is to just build nonlinearities uh, throughout the model that we have. And this starts to get us into uh, things like multi-layer neural networks. Uh, and these kinds of models are very powerful in what they can actually do. But there is, in, in the, these situations, there is no unique uh, solution. And, uh, and we have to use gradient descent in order to uh, find a reasonable uh, solution. So, so right now, we're going to focus on the, the concept behind that first point, this nonlinear preprocessing. And uh, that allows us to maintain uh, lots of good properties. So let's transition over to the mathematics. So here, here's the, our linear model that we've been talking about uh, already. So we have some sort of vectorial uh, prediction that we're making based on some input vector j. And in some sense, we can kind of write this as, as uh, xj is a, a set of different values, a vector of different values. So uh, uh, j0, xj1, et cetera, down to xjn. Um, and really what we mean by xjn is that we have a one here. That's our standard that we've uh, been using. And we can think of taking this vector and multiplying it by, uh, by w in order to create our estimate of, of yj hat. And so then our, our learning problem has been to, to estimate what those Ws ought to be. With this idea of nonlinear preprocessing, what we're going to do is add an intermediate step in, in between uh, these two pieces here. And, and uh, 
the notation for this is um, we're going to uh, take x of j and and uh, this phi here is is our nonlinear transformation. So we end up with phi of xj. And then it's this phi of xj over which we have our linear model. So we have our w and our yj hat. So let me give you an example of what this phi might look like. Uh, a, a simple example is a polynomial, polynomial expansion. And, uh, and then this is going to be of some degree uh, d. So let's imagine that uh, xj, let's just do this simple case, n is equal to 1. So xj is equal to xj0 uh, and a 1. And let's assume also that d is equal to 2. And what this means is that when we do this nonlinear transformation, we're going to create all possible uh, quadratic linear and constant terms given the elements in this, vec in this vector here. So in this case, that is uh, xj0 squared. Actually, let me move that zero down. So that's our, our quadratic term, xj1, uh, sorry, xj0, the linear term, and then a 1 here. So, so that's relatively uh, straightforward. But now let's imagine that we have n is equal to 2. So xj is, is now 3 long, xj0, xj1, and a 1. What this phi does is it creates all possible quadratic terms uh, first. And that includes the cross terms. So we have x j zero squared, x j one squared, and then x j zero times x j one. And then, so those are all of our quadratic terms. And then our linear terms are x j zero, x j one, and one. Now we can keep going with this. We can we can use, uh, move on to n equals three if you if if you care to. Uh, I, I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Uh, but we still end up with all the quadratic terms, all of the linear terms, and and the constant term. If when when d becomes three, then this phi uh, produces not only the quadratic, linear, and uh, constant terms, but it also produces the cubic terms. And constant. And, and, and D, we could, could technically choose it to be anything that we want. Uh, every time we increase D, we uh, increase the, the size of this vector here. And then, and then what do we do with this? Then we can actually imagine taking this vector, multiplying it by a weight matrix, a W, in order to achieve our predictions for what yj is. So mathematically, what this looks like is yj hat, what we originally had was W transpose, and then we had an xj uh, on the right-hand side here. And the only thing that we're doing here is throwing in this nonlinear transformation. And the important takeaway here is, is that with this method, our predictions are still linear in, the, in this set of uh, Ws, which, which means that all of our linear regression tools that, that we've already learned still apply. And, and that's pretty cool. And, and yet we can still express a whole variety of uh, different models. So for example, I could express, uh, let's say, y 
j hat is equal to uh, uh, 2x j0 squared plus uh, 3x j1 squared plus uh, uh, plus x j0 uh, times x j1, uh, etc. So that, that's an example of polynomial expansion, but this phi could, could be anything. And over the last 20 years, we, we've actually learned a lot about what phi uh, can become and how we can make uh, all of these computations very uh, efficient. One other type of phi, let me write this one out. So again, xj is, let's imagine it's just a, a n equals two case. So we have an xj0, xj1, and a 1. And in this case, what phi does, say it might uh, compute the cosine of xj0 and the cosine of xj1, and then the cosine of 2xj0, the cosine of 2xj1, and then the next pair of terms are four times, or four times xj0 and 4xj1. And, and on down the line, we can, this, this multiple here, we can carry that as far as we'd like. And of course, we will have the one down at the, the very end there. When we formulate phi in this way, we start to get closer to something that feels a lot like a Fourier transform. If you recall, uh, a Fourier transform is a means of estimating, say, some sort of a time series as a function of uh, a whole set, of, a weighted set of uh, sums of cosines and sines. And, and this effectively is what we have here. And, and again, uh, we still have the linear model formulation sitting on the right-hand side here. So there's our yj hat. And, and, and all of our linear regression tools still apply even in this Fourier transform type of a space. All right, so that's a quick sketch of this idea of doing nonlinear transformations as a pre-processing step uh, to li a linear regression approach. And now it's time to give you a quick example of how that works with polynomial features.